So that's why the writer of the Psalms and why Isaiah goes, wait, cave on the Lord and you'll renew your strength. Because the literal idea is knit yourself together with God's character and his nature and you'll find that together you're stronger. Welcome to A Jew and a Gentile Discuss. I'm your co-host, Carly Berna. And I'm Ezra Benjamin. We're a Jew and a Gentile who both believe in Jesus and believe that there's value in looking at history as well as today's world in the headlines through both a Jewish and a Christian lens. Just a heads up before we dive into our topic today, Carly, you know, A Jew and a Gentile Discuss is listener supported and we want to give you, our listeners, an opportunity at the end of this program to get more involved. So stay tuned for those details. Let's discuss. Well, Ezra, today I'm excited because we get to talk about something that I actually went to school for, which Ooh. is Hebrew. Wow. But I only took two semesters, okay. so um, I can't really be much help to you today. Well, I took zero semesters, and I've learned as I go, I suppose. But Well, I'm bringing that up because, obviously, those listening and us, we read the Bible, we read stories in it, you know, we've heard them over and over, but not often do we look back at the actual phrases that are repeated and what the actual meaning of the words are. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like today, we're going to talk about a specific Hebrew word really connects and brings out um, something that you might not know if you're just reading the translation of it. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is waiting on God before you turn the podcast off. There's going to be some good insights in here, not the things that your grandmother says to you, like, just yeah. wait on the Lord. Right, right. God's time is in our time, sweetie. And you're like, this is a buzzkill. This is terrible. And all that means is don't know what to tell you. Sorry, it hasn't happened in your life yet. Right? Like all the things that we think. Anyway, yes. yeah, when we hear wait on the Lord. Yes, exactly. There's obviously a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about waiting on the Lord. Sure. And I think, you know, we have to immediately, you know, you and I are both American and we're in a fast food culture, right? Like we want everything now. In fact, we actually want it yesterday and we're disappointed that it takes so long as to be now. And so this idea of waiting, even patience, I don't think patience is a virtue in our culture, right? Like having to wait longer than we expect for something to come to pass or somebody taking longer to do something. Or even I would be so audacious as to say the idea that the Lord wouldn't come through in the time frame that we would set out, right? For him to fulfill something he's promised to us or uh, answer the prayer we've been praying. Uh, it's countercultural for us. And I think, you know, when I hear the word wait, like immediately, you know, as we were preparing for this podcast episode, I was thinking like, when I hear wait, I picture myself in like the airline, you know, boarding line where they're doing like the veterans and then the people who need extra time boarding and the people who have, you know, children under 30 who decide that they need extra time boarding. And I'm waiting, right? Like, th and I'm going, this is taking longer than I thought. And I become infuriated. I'm ready to like pull the nuclear option at some point because this is, uh, my thought is how much longer do I have to wait? Right? It's this process where you feel helpless, where you're looking at circumstances around you that should be changing and they're not. You're looking at things happening for other people. And, you know, inside I'm going, why not me? Like, I might need longer to board. I have a lot of electronics to take out of my bag. I should be, you know, anyway, to not, not beat that analogy to death too much. But this idea of helplessness, it's happening for somebody else, not for me. I deserve better than this. I thought this should have been done. If I was in control, this would have been done by now. And all these thoughts. Uh, and, and that is sort of what I've brought to the table in the idea of waiting. Right. Like, I don't know if you can relate. I'm, I'm not you know, you're probably more patient than I am. Carly, I was but. just going to say, Ezra, you've just revealed to our audience that patience is one of the fruits of the spirit you're still working on. Still, I will be working on that till the day I pass away. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. and the um, Lord's working on me on it, too. Yeah. I mean, there's, of course, lots of things that I'm impatient about and don't like waiting. But it's interesting. I remember when I first became a Christian. I don't yeah. know if you remember this, but mm -hmm. um, there was that fireproof movie. Yeah. 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 And in that movie was a song about waiting. Okay. And in the movie, the guy is, he's waiting for his wife. And so he, there's like a whole montage yeah, of him yeah. waiting and how the words of the song are something like, um, you know, I will worship you while I wait. Uh -huh. You know, I will be 
patient while while I wait and all of these things. And I remember as a new believer listening to that song and thinking, oh, it's going to be so great waiting now that I'm a Christian because I know exactly what to do when I wait. I worship you. I'm going right. to be patient. Right. It's going to be great. I'm yeah. just going to wait and it's going to be great. And then about 12 minutes <laughs> in, you're done worshiping and you're like, seriously, Lord, how could this not have happened by now? Right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Um, and actually, Ezra, I was thinking just now of your, for those who have listened to the Ezra Story podcast, yeah. you had a long period of waiting before the Lord brought you into Jewish ministry after he said to you, this is what I want you to do. But then you're like, I'm ready. And he's like, wait. Yep, exactly. And a lot of my life circumstances actually had to change for me to be ready to step into that, which we'll talk about in a, in a couple minutes. But yeah, this idea waiting, I think, I think of, maybe you listening can relate, as a very passive activity, right? Like arms folded, checking your phone, right? Things are happening that are outside of my control, so I'm just going to kind of check out. And the biblical idea now launching into the Hebrew for the word wait is anything but that. But before I kind of do the big reveal of what the word is, there was this other thing that bothered me in the Bible, and it was this idea You know, we see, especially in the Old Testament, this phrase, wait on the Lord. And so often, the phrase right after that, Carly says, and you will renew your strength, right? Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Or be of a good courage and God will strengthen your heart while you wait on him. Uh, And all these phrases where waiting is connected to strength. And it, it puzzled me, okay? Because I'm going, when I'm waiting, I'm pretty much exhausted at the end. Like, I'm done. I'm done waiting. I'm exasperated. I mean, come on, you know, serenity now, right? So I couldn't connect this idea of waiting with increasing in strength. It didn't make any sense to me. It was a passive thing, and I feel weaker, not stronger at the end of it. And then finally, you know, and this is my encouragement for our listeners. If you see a phrase in the Bible pop up enough times and it bothers you, Or if you end up in a situation where you keep thinking of a verse that's supposed to help you over and over, like wait on the Lord, and it's not helping you, do a deeper dive. Like peel back one layer of the onion and pull out any number of resources that we can all access now online or whatever and say either in the Hebrew or the Greek, in this case, because it's a Jew and a Gentile discuss, we're talking about the Hebrew today, what is the word that was originally used and what does it mean? And do I believe like the Bible has been translated accurately throughout history, both the Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament, and then the New Testament? I totally do. Uh, But the problem is English is not Hebrew and English isn't Greek. And these were these guys' best attempt to come up with a word that would get as close as we can to the word that was actually used. But sometimes the word has a much fuller definition than what we understand in the English. So in the case of wait on the Lord, The word we see in Psalm 27, in Isaiah 40, we see these other, you know, phrases like wait on the Lord and he'll renew your strength. The word in the Hebrew is kaveh. And the best way, and you'll probably find this, like don't don't take our word for it on the podcast. Look it up yourself. Go to a Bible dictionary or what's the fancy word? Concordance. Yeah, you're the seminary student, so you should have said that. But concordance, right? Uh, And what you're going to find with kaveh is this idea that it's not passive at all. The best way, and sometimes this happens with Hebrew words, is it's actually like a picture rather than a definition. And the picture with kaveh is the idea that you're weaving together three strands to make a cord, or weaving together multiple strands. It doesn't have to be three. And one is the idea that the cord is getting thicker, it's becoming capable of more, it's stronger as you weave it together. And then the second idea with kaveh is as you pull on the thing, it's going to get stronger. So like picture a rope, right, that has multiple strands. If you sort of push that together where there's no tension on it, right, it looks flimsy, like the pieces stick out, there's yarn, you know, you see a lot of air through it. And you go, this isn't strong. But then if you pull on that thing, like you pull it really tight, all of a sudden you see this thing uh, come together and become really strong. Like the strength of it is revealed in the tension that's on it. And that's the definition of Kaveh. So when it says, Kaveh la Adonai, wait on the Lord, the literal definition is knit yourself together with the Lord in a way that when more tension is applied to the situation, the strength of it is revealed. And it's like, whoa. Okay, there's nothing passive about that, right? I'm thinking, wait, arms crossed, sit back. No, knit yourself together with the Lord 
So the more tension that's put on the relationship or the circumstance, the stronger it becomes or the more its strength is revealed. And then I went, ah, okay. So that's why the writer of the Psalms and why Isaiah goes, wait, cave on the Lord and you'll renew your strength. Because the literal idea is knit yourself together with God's character and his nature and you'll find that together you're stronger. So what does that look like? Like, yeah. you know, I'm I'm imagining you standing in the airport yeah. line still. Yeah. You know, now you uh, you remind yourself, okay, I'm right. supposed to knit myself together with the Lord here. It, an active thing, not a passive thing. What what does that right. look like? While I'm standing in the American Airlines line, right? Number like 382 for boarding. Sorry, American. I know great is what you're going for. Uh keep going. Commentary aside, when I'm standing in the line of an unnamed airline waiting to board, right? Like if I'm just waiting, I'm tired, my feet hurt, I'm annoyed. But if I exchange that for going, okay, Lord, use this as an opportunity, right? Like you said that patience is a virtue of your Holy Spirit in me, right? Love, joy, peace, patience. Okay, I need more of that patience right now. Something in me needs to connect more to who you are in order to, you know, have a patience that's more than more than what I have to bring to the table. And all of a sudden, I'm not just Ezra being tired of waiting. I'm Ezra trying to knit myself together with the fabric and the character of who the Lord is and who he said, he, not just who he is, but who he said he'd be in me out of the fruit of his spirit in me. And all of a sudden, maybe I find myself stronger. Maybe I find myself more willing to be boarding group 27 or more willing to let the physically disabled person in front of me get on the plane without being annoyed. And is that just something I came up with? No, it's going, okay, I'm, I got to knit myself together here. I have to, I have to unite myself with something that's true about the character and the nature of God. And all of a sudden I find myself more able to endure the waiting. I find myself stronger. So obviously that's kind of a silly example of you waiting in, well, in line. Probably good. You know, I've been pretty ugly in airline lines, so I better <laughs> apply the example next time. But, but for those listening who have, you know, much bigger situations sure. like you're waiting for a family member to accept the Lord or you're waiting for a diagnosis right. or, you know, really serious things like that. How can this be an encouraging and hopeful word? Yeah, I think ultimately what's true about the Lord, right, has to be our anchor in life, not what's true about our circumstances. Because our circumstances, like I can think of days recently where everything was you know, coming up roses at 6.30 in the morning and by 4 p.m., life was terrible. Why? Because the Lord changed? No, because the circumstances of my day that I didn't see coming changed. And so how do I wait on the Lord in the midst of that? It's going, okay, what do I know to be true that's independent of and fundamentally above stronger than my circumstances? And I think uh, examples you brought up, health crises or, you know, my wife and I just went through a season, you know, where she was... Uh, looking for work and like we trust the lord in concept right in principle that there's something out there but the weeks go by and then the months go by and this is another part of waiting i think like i'm going why hasn't this happened by now and one day i'm taking my morning walk and the lord's like you don't trust me to provide financially for your family and i was like oh no right because i'm tired of waiting but there was something about who he was in our life that I hadn't yet grasped onto because I was trying to do something in my own strength. And I had to take a hold of, okay, whether or not this job comes through, however long it takes, what I know to be true is you're our provider and you're our sustainer. And then the job came through. But if I only look at it in the natural, we had to wait way longer and it looks like a failure, right? Like it took way longer than I thought it should have. But Knitting myself together with the Lord as my provider through the process made me stronger. And then we got the breakthrough. But the reality is, even if the job didn't come through for five years, the Lord still would have been our provider and our sustainer. So it was that, like this idea that in, in the times when we're waiting way longer than we think we should have to, is there anything, you know, I could put this on a t-shirt, but the thing I try to kind of remember these days is, is, is there anything the Lord wants to change in me while I'm waiting for him to change the thing I see? Like, you know, yes, that rhymes and it's cutesy, but it's true, right? Like, Lord, I'm tired of waiting. And he's like, well, uh, there's more I want to do in you and on you in this process that you're not participating with me yet in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other idea, right? Like, Kaveh's very active. It's participatory. Waiting can feel passive. I, the Lord's just got to do what he promised to do. 
And he's like, yeah, but but you have a part in this too. And if you're not going to participate with me, you can't do my part and I'm not going to do yours. Mm -hmm. Like that's sort of like New York, you know, uh, obnoxious version of the Holy Spirit, but that idea, right? Like we can't do God's part and he won't do ours. So Kaveh communicates that there's an element of something we have to do. Are there verses either Old Testament or and New Testament specifically that use this word or in the New Testament that, uh, that refer to it? Yeah, I think uh, one of the Psalms of Ascent, this idea of these psalms which really were sung they were songs put to melody that were recited as jewish men and women went up into the temple to pray really jewish men at the time because the men were going into the temple right but they would walk step by step up the steps of the temple in jerusalem and on each step they would pause and they would say one of these psalms of ascent and one of them is psalm 130 and it says i wait for the lord it's th that same word, kave. I'm waiting on the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. And then it says, I waited for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. So the idea is there used to be these guys on the literal ramparts, the city walls of Jerusalem, watching as the night went on to make sure that the city was defended from its enemies, or at least they were aware if any enemies were coming. And these guys' greatest hope was that morning would come when they were free from harm. And so all night they're looking at the eastern horizon for the slightest sign of that kind of blue, dark purple, gray in the sky when they know, okay, morning is here. And so the psalmist is saying, I'm, I'm looking at the Lord and connecting myself with him. My expectation and my hope is in him even more than those who are supposed to take care of the city are waiting for the morning to come. Like he's saying even more. My focus is on the Lord, not on my circumstances. And I love that psalm because it also says, Lord, if you kept a record of sins, who could stand? But with you, there's forgiveness. I love that. Like this is, this is, you know, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Jew and Gentile, there's no difference. We all have. And he's saying, Lord, if you wrote these things down where I fall short in your book, no one could stand before you. But because he's coveying, right? That's you don't know how you say it, but he's knitting himself with the character of, together with the character of God. And he's saying, this is what I know about you, that with you, there's forgiveness. And so I'm, I'm waiting on you, right? Like I'm going to knit myself together with the reality that you desire forgiveness more than judgment. You desire mercy more than judgment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a New Testament passage I'm thinking of, again, New Testament's not written in Hebrew, so it doesn't use Kaveh, but it's this idea. Maybe a lot of us can relate to this. It's another verse that people quote when they don't know what to say because something's taking longer in our life than it should, right? And people try to be helpful and very devotional. And it says this, do not forget this one thing, dear friends, that a day with the Lord is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day, right? People quote that, well, with the day with the Lord, you know, a thousand years are like a day. And what they're saying is, yeah, I don't know why this is taking so the heck long. Sorry, uh, but here's some scripture to console you. But then Peter goes on and he says, he, he gives the reason why. He says, the Lord isn't slow in doing what he promised he would do in the way that some of us understand slowness, right? Like, don't put your time frame on the Lord. And he says this, instead, the Lord is patient with you because he doesn't want any to perish, but rather he wants everyone to come to repentance, right? So even like if we go macro for a minute, Jewish and Gentile believers in, in Jesus are going, why is it taking so long for the Lord to return, right? When is Jesus going to come back and rule and reign? And Peter's saying, no, 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 no. Circumstances are bad on earth, but understand, the Lord's waiting because his desire is that people come to know him and that they don't spend an eternity apart from him. So the Lord's mercy is actually part of the reason why he delays sometimes. And by delay, I mean takes longer than we should think. He's never late according to his calendar. But it's an interesting thought, right? Like, well, Lord, why is this taking so long? Because of my mercy. And I think that's even true in our lives sometimes. Lord, you, this was supposed to happen for me by now. Why hasn't it happened? And maybe he wants to tell us because I'm protecting you from something. Like you don't see my mercy at work, even though it's outside your own timeline. And usually we can look back decades later right. and see that. Just like in your own example, you can totally. probably think, man, if I would have gotten into Jewish ministry at that time. It would have been a total disaster. Because I hadn't learned some of the life lessons I needed to learn professionally, like in the career work world and personally, like in relational world. And there was things I had to learn the hard way and just lessons that take time to learn. 
And it was totally the Lord that it was six or seven years between when I felt called into Jewish ministry to share the good news of Yeshua, Jesus, with my own people and their neighbors until the time when that actually happened in my life. And at the time, I was like, every time I prayed, God, let me out of this season, what the heck is taking so long? I got deeper into the job that I was in. Like, it was funny. Lord, let me out. Okay, you get a promotion. No, Lord, I want to get out. Okay, you get more responsibility. And in hindsight, like you said, I needed to go through that whole process or I wouldn't have been prepared for when he did answer the prayer. So it was his mercy and his providence and his protection for me that things took so long. But it took some knitting myself together with the Lord during that season because probably had I just been a passive waiter, I probably would have become bitter. And I think we all have to be careful with that as believers, right? Like if we if we become offended at the Lord, and maybe you're listening right now and you're going, eh, if I'm really being honest, I expected the Lord to do something in my life that he hasn't shown up and done yet. So we got to kind of like rewind for a minute and go, have I been a passive waiter? Like, is there something the Lord wants to do in me before he can do what I'm asking him to do? Like, have I crossed my arms and said, Lord, you have to move. I'm not, I'm not moving. Uh, and just been a bystander to his work in my own life. Like we just, we all have to kind of do those heart checks. Or just ask him and say, how can I bind together with you? Exactly. Now. Am I conveying or am I just bus stop spectator waiting? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's the question for all of us. So what do you kind of see as the takeaway for those listening from thinking about this Hebrew word and what it means? Yeah, I think, you know, two things. One is we all have to check ourselves, right? Including me, like uh, the example I gave, the job thing with my wife just happened. And it was like, oh man, I, the Lord needed, I fundamentally distrusted something about his character in my own life. And he wasn't going to change the season for us until I got that right. So I would say, if something feels parked in your life, cave a little bit. Like it, it usually doesn't take much because it's just, it's like a fundamental posture change. I'm going to engage with the Lord rather than staring at the Lord, pointing my finger going, you should have worked by now. So that's part of my encouragement. And then also, you know, as we talk about so often on this podcast, right? Like that Psalm 130 idea. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, who could stand? And the psalmist knows there's forgiveness. And Peter knows the Lord's posture is to have mercy and to see people come to repentance. Um, why is the Lord resisting so long to return to Jerusalem to rule and reign? It's a scriptural promise. Jesus said, I'm going to come back to you the same way I'm going up from you now. He went up from the Mount of Olives. He's coming back to Jerusalem as the ruling and conquering king. Why is it taking so long? Because he's still after something, Carly, with Israel and the nations. He's after a recognition of himself in a way that leads to repentance, in a way that leads to an outpouring of mercy. So I think we need to recognize that, especially as it relates to the Jewish people. Jesus said, you're not going to see me again at Jerusalem, Jewish people living here, until you cry, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Like, you're not going to see me come back to this place again until you recognize that I'm the one that Moses and the prophet said was coming. I'm the promised Messiah. I'm the Savior of Israel and the Redeemer of all mankind. And so while the Lord's timeline isn't necessarily what we or even people in every generation thought it should be, it's actually his mercy and his own patience at work because he desires Jewish people and their neighbors, right? The most people possible to have that recognition. Oh, this one we've persecuted, this one we rejected as he can't be the Messiah. How could a ruling and conquering king die naked on a cross under the Roman army? Oh, he actually is the one we've waited for. He's exactly what we needed, though we didn't know we needed him. So that's my encouragement is just be aware that there's more God wants to do with Jewish people in the world and Jewish people who are in your lives than maybe what we've been aware of. And that uh, God's timeline is, is based on mercy and a desire for restored relationship, not just based on uh, things not things happening that are outside of God's control or you know world events taking him by surprise and now he has to regroup no none of that's going on it's it's his mercy so knit yourself together with the Lord for his purposes in your own life and I would encourage our audience like even if you have no Jewish background or heritage knit yourself together a little bit with what God said he's up to with Israel and the Jewish people with his heart for Jewish people and you might be surprised that something will become stronger in you as it relates to a burden 
for God's plans and purposes for the Jewish people around the world. I love that idea of thinking that waiting on the Lord, which is something that we see as maybe a negative or right. painful, right. is really this idea of binding together if you look yeah. at it through the Hebrew perspective. So for those listening, I hope that was encouraging to you. Um, I know this isn't a traditional one of our podcasts where we're talking or explaining about Messianic Jewish theology, but looking at the original language and seeing what God was trying to communicate should be encouraging to our faith. So we hope you join us next week for another episode. If you benefited from what you heard today and you feel others could benefit from hearing it too, we want to ask you to get involved and become a supporter. $50 gets this and other important messages out to a broader audience and gets life-saving medical care to one additional underserved Jewish person living far outside the land of Israel. As a thank you, we'll send you a bag of fresh roasted Ethiopian beans from our own Lost Tribes Coffee Company. These delicious beans are responsible for both the speed and intensity with which Ezra expresses himself on this podcast. Totally true, Carly. And if you're not ready to become a supporter today, just let us know that you listen by entering and giving a little bit of information. You'll be entered in a drawing to win a free bag of that Lost Tribes Coffee Company coffee. You can go to our website at jewandagentiledisgust.org or click in the show notes for more information. And if you want to hear more episodes, subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcast content. And we'd also love if you leave us a review and share this podcast with someone you know. You can also follow us on social media at the handle A Jew and A Gentile Discuss. And if there's anything you want us to discuss or have us answer, please submit your questions at our website, A Jew and A Gentile Discuss.org. This is Carly and Ezra. Thanks for listening to A Jew and A Gentile Discuss. Join us next week for another episode. The show is a production of Jewish Voice Ministries International.